Let's go to a topic we talked about before, money. We assume money is going to make us happy, but money often has very salient reference points, particularly the salary that we have often has a very salient reference point. And this is very salient. In fact, this philosopher John Stuart Mill once noted, men did not desire to be rich, but they desire to be richer than other men. And that always, because again, there's going to always be some other man out there that's richer than you, it's going to make you feel kind of crappy. And this is a real phenomenon of the way which reference points mess us up, social comparison, which we're going to define as the act of evaluating not just your salary and your money, but your status, your possessions, your spouse, your whatever, versus somebody else. And the mean thing about social comparison is that our brains tend to pick that other person who has that, that has a much better thing than us. This is social comparison, and it can cause us to do some downright dumb things when it comes to the things that might make us happy. Um, one study that showed this by Solnick and Hemingway looked at this. They looked at whether people were willing to give up real income just to be better than other people. And so here was the, the question they posed to Harvard students. Which of these two salary possibilities would you prefer? Option number one is that you're going to earn $50,000 and everybody around you is going to earn $25,000. So you're making relatively more money. Or option two is that you could earn $100,000, but everybody else at your company who works in the same position as you, they're getting $250,000. Which of these would you want? Now, you assume that Harvard students would take twice the salary. But in fact, more than 50% of them would prefer this option. They'd reduce their income by half just to be beating everybody else, which is kind of silly in absolute terms, but makes sense with social comparison. That's kind of uh, the bad way to do it. But you might say, like, well, maybe there's a reasonable salary reference point you could use, right? Maybe it's weird if everybody doing the same job as you at your organization is like making less money than you. You know, if you have a summer job and you're earning like $15 an hour and everybody else is earning $30 an hour, you might be like, hang on, there's something wrong with this situation, right? And so for me, like, you know, maybe if I was comparing my salary against this guy, this is Tom Neer, he's another Yale professor, another head of college, if he was earning way more than me, I'd be like, hang on, what's up, right? But I shouldn't use for example, Beyonce's salary as a reference point, right? That would be, we have a different job, we have different skill sets. That would just make me feel unnecessarily bad, right? But it turns out that this is yet another way our mind sucks, which is that we don't just use reasonable reference points. Our mind soaks up and evaluates our own situation based on whatever reference point we happen to notice in whatever domain, whether that's salary, our bodies, our grades, whatever. If you see it, it's going to affect your evaluation. How do we know this? Well, in the salary domain, we know this because people pick up on salary reference points that are unrealistic all the time. And one of the unrealistic reference points we often see are the people we see on television, right? Like Real Housewives of Beverly Hills or Empire, right? You see a lot of rich people on television. That shouldn't be your, your standard for wealth, but it turns out people use it as such. And we know this from one study that found that the more TV watching you do, the higher you estimate other people's wealth. You think the average person is more wealthy the more television you watch. And interestingly, the more television you watch, overall, the lower the average you think of your own wealth. So if you watch a lot of television, you think whatever you earn is probably less than it, a person who didn't watch that much television thinks. So just seeing these other reference points, they're getting in and making you think, well, I'm not earning any money because you're watching like Real Housewives out there. And so reference points mess up our sense of how much we're earning. It also messes up our sense of having awesome stuff, right? And we kind of get this. When you see the fantastic stuff of other people, yours feels kind of bad. Like, I have a car that's like fine, it runs fine, whatever. But if I start looking at Beyonce's car, I'm like, man, my car kind of sucks, right? Like, you can feel bad about your own stuff based on other people's. You know, so much so you have a nice meme for this. If your neighbor's car is ugly, that actually helps your happiness because you don't feel so bad about your other stuff, right? That's awesome stuff. But I think more salient for you all is that your reference points are the kinds of things that might mess up your happiness about your grades. And if you're not getting perfect grades, chances are there's someone in your high school who is. There's someone in your high school who's doing better than you in terms of the GPA. And that means even if you're doing OK, you might not feel so good so other, because other students are doing better. And this is even more problematic for the students who are in the highest levels. So if you're competing with other AP students, chances are they're doing really well. Your comparison group probably is no longer the whole high school. It's like the other students who are in the best, highest level classes. That means even though you might be beating many students at your school, you're not getting the kind of happiness boost that comes from it because your comparison group narrows, narrows, narrows to just the very people who make you feel worst about yourself. Thank you, reference points. Really bad stuff. 
So that was how reference points affect our happiness about our grades, but it, reference points affect our happiness about pretty much everything. And I think one of the biggest ones that affects teens today is that reference points affect your happiness about your looks. Objectively, you all look great, you're awesome. But if you compare yourself against other people, there's probably always somebody, even if you look great, that's gonna look better than you. Um, and this is where I share this very famous uh, photo of Sophia Loren, uh, who is quite beautiful herself, but when she looks over at Jane Mansfield, she's kind of not feeling that good about herself, right? And this is a famous photo, I think, because everybody relates to it, right? There's always the prettier girl in the room, as it were, right? But your generation has more prettier people, um, not because there's objectively better looking people around, but because you have to look at more and more people, right? I mean, think about it, before the 1950s, People just didn't see that many people, but then television came around and now you're looking at all these beautiful actors and actresses that you're kind of looking at all the time. And your generation has it even worse because you don't just have television, you have magazines that show you these glossy supermodels and things. And of course, you have the internet where right on display on TikTok, on Instagram are like the most beautiful people out there. And again, remember this really stupid feature of reference points. You don't look at a glossy photo magazine or look at an Instagram model and think, that's not the right reference point to use. I'm just a high school student. Like I don't have like hordes of people who are focusing on my diet and my hair and my exercise and all this stuff. You just think, ah, reference point, that makes me feel bad and your brain soaks it up. And so social media isn't just bad for body comparisons. I think social media is like a whole network of giving you comparisons about all kinds of things that are gonna make you feel bad because you're getting lots and lots of reference points on social media. And that means you're kind of comparing everything you experience on social media to yourself and it often makes you feel bad. And this can lead to lots and lots of comparisons that make us feel unhappy. Um, just another meme here that one of my Yale students made. You know, you're just going around trying to love yourself and there's your stupid friend on social media who keeps going to Italy and you're like, why don't I get to go? And you feel really bad, right? But there's a particularly bad thing about all these social comparisons that happen on social media. It's not just that they happen and that they're kind of bad and we could avoid them. It's that we're really bad at doing the comparisons. We're getting the comparisons all wrong. It's not just that we compare ourselves against these extreme examples of beauty or money or whatever. We don't even get the comparison right. What do I mean by that? I mean what the science fiction writer Cory Doctorow once talked about, which is he quoted as saying, it cannot be repeated too much that you live your own blooper reel and experience everyone else's highlight reel. I think the problem with social media is people are putting together their perfect highlight reel where they look beautiful and happy and rich and whatever, especially in the public version. But in the private version, what's going on inside their brains, what's going on in the background might not be so good. You might see an Instagram picture that looks like this, where you look at these people like, oh my gosh, my friends are so happy and like they're doing all this fun stuff and on this vacation. But you don't know what's going on on their insides. You're comparing your insides of what you're thinking to their outsides. And if you looked at their insides, they might be thinking something like, I hate my body, completely anxious right now about how I look, or you know, I'm pretending to have fun, but like, I have so much work, I need to get back to like applying for colleges and all this stuff. Like, you don't see any of that, it's just gone. And this is the problem, but what the research shows is that we get the comparisons really wrong because we don't have access to the same stuff. And one of my favorite studies that looked at this came from Jordan and colleagues where they really tried to explicitly look at how off are our predictions about what's going on with the good and bad things that are happening to other people. And so they brought first year students in and had them estimate the number of positive and negative experiences other first year college students had. So they're kind of guessing how many like good and bad things are happening. But then they also said how often those things happen to them. And that means that the researchers have an accurate guess about like how often good and bad things happen versus your estimate of how often these happen to other people. And we can just ask whether or not those match up. And so here's when, what Jordan et al found when they were looking at positive experiences. So a positive experience would be like, how many people do you think in your school, for example, attended a fun party? Like in their estimate for these college first years, 62%. How many went to an athletic game that they enjoyed? How many went out with their friends? How many had a great meal? How many got a higher grade than they expected? That's the estimate. But when you look at the actual, what the actual percentages are, in every single case, the actual percent of people who had the like good thing happen is usually less than like people are predicting. So we're overestimating the positive things that are happening to other people. That's the positive stuff. But when you look at the negative things, the pattern is even worse. Like, so let's look at negative events that could happen your first year at college. You have a fight with your roommate. You thought about missing your friends. You kind of were rejected by somebody you were trying to date. You thought about all your bad habits and felt really bad about yourself. You received a lower grade than you expected. Those are the estimates. But here's what happens in the actual. In these cases, they're not just like, 
like higher than people predict, they're often in many cases way higher than people predict. And the researchers figured out why, which is that if something negative happens to you in college, it's not like you announce it like on Instagram. You try to effortfully hide it so nobody knows. And that means that we're just like not working with the right social comparisons. We're not like tracking all the good and bad things that happen to people accurately. And so all that goes to say that we're overestimating other people's good stuff and we're really underestimating other people's bad stuff. So we're making all these social comparisons, in some cases automatically, that make us feel terrible and those comparisons are just wrong.